Snow is falling in September? Okay, the largest airborne operation in history, Operation Markigan, the battles of Arnhem, Nijmegen, Eindhoven, from the German perspective. Massive divisions pouring in from the skies, and all the Germans have is a few groups, literally groups of soldiers, who are just mashed together, given a leader, and sent off to battle. And that is pretty much a good summary of what the Germans were doing. This book is literally the only book written from purely the German perspective, and it is unique in that sense, because it just shows how a defeated army somehow, somehow clawed its way to victory. When I was reading this book, you really do get a sense of how close this battle actually was. The Germans had nothing left. They were exhausted after years of war. I mean, you often hear about the British fighting on Arnhem with no ammunition left, but still carrying on because they're courageous and heroes. But yet the Germans were doing the exact same thing. In fact, it was joked at the time that the Germans were using British weapons and the British were using German weapons because, well, the Germans were relying on airborne operations to, you know, the British to resupply them because their logistics were gone and the British had no supplies at all. So they were just capturing German weapons and using them. So really, that's no excuse. Both sides were fighting heroically in this sense. And you really get that picture when you read Kershaw's book. And you really do get a sense of the sort of improvisation and innovation of the German forces. I mean, the, the Kampfgruppen, the battle groups, didn't exist the days before the battle. They just appeared on day one or day two or whatever. And basically groups of soldiers were gathered together. A leader gathered them and just marched them off to war. And that is exactly what you get. So you get leaders like Spindler, Graebner, Zonistel. I mean, these guys I'd never heard of before. And it's not just the Arnhem side of the battle. You get the whole picture, the big picture, Nijmegen and Eindhoven included. We hear about the 406th Division, which, as I keep saying, isn't a division, and yet was called that, and didn't even exist the day before the landings happened, or on day one, really. It only existed on the second day, and Kershaw goes into that much detail about it. We hear about Panzer Brigade 107, and the other camp group who attacked the corridor in the later days of the battle and ended up decisively cutting the logistics and preventing the British from getting to Arnhem. You don't hear about this in other books. It's not just the big picture, it's the small picture as well. You hear about stories of you know the Germans trying to collect their dead from Arnhem Bridge using half tracks, and then the British snipers are killing the Germans as they're doing it, adding to the collection of bodies. And Kershaw comes to some quite surprising conclusions, like the fact that it was a German victory rather than a Allied defeat, which is pretty revolutionary, really. Oh, wow, the, the Allies lost the battle. It must be because the Germans won it. Um, there's also other conclusions as well, but I won't spoil them. You, they're good, though. It basically challenges the conventional sort of wisdom you hear about in other books, such as Cornelius Ryan's uh, Bridge Too Far, or even the film, um, and all the sort of, you know, what culture has said about the battle. It, no, this, this book really does challenge that. So the maps and the aerial photographs and the photographs in general are just brilliant. And, and not only that, the aerial photographs, you get pictures with them describing the events and talking about the formation movements, and it just adds to it completely. Just It's just brilliant. I, there's not very many books that go into this depth. And the stories you hear about as well. So the, the Germans capture some British signals equipment, and I mentioned this in the comments before, um, and the Germans use this equipment to radio or to signal to the RAF that they need water. So the RAF loads their planes up with water and delivers it to the Germans. It, it, it just... It, the, the RAF were delivering and taking orders from the Germans. It's just unbelievable. And there's there's lots of stories like that as well. And not just stories, but facts, figures, you know, formations. The details are so good that I honestly don't think I would have been able to do my Operation Market Garden documentary without this book. Uh, I'd say two thirds of the information I got for it was was pulled from this book because it goes into that much detail, whereas other books don't quite go to that extent. So yeah, I was reliant on this book. I mean, it's that good that I, it's inspired me to do a book review on it. It's the first ever book review I've ever done. I mean, 
I mean, if Kershaw is out there, which he probably is, but he's probably not watching this, but if he is, he, I beg you, Kershaw, do the same thing, but from the Allies' point of view, like the Allies' perspective, do the exact same thing you've just done, but from the Allies' perspective, I would buy it. Without a shadow of a doubt, I would buy it. I wouldn't say that this book was an introduction to Operation Market Garden. It's more of a, you know, I've read a couple of books already on it, and therefore I want to read one more on the German perspective. Yes, this, this book fulfills that, but it's not something you'd pick up first time. If you've not read anything about Operation Market Garden before, probably not the book for yourself. So there are two versions of this book, one which is bad and one which is good. Now, luckily, I got the good version. So if it looks like this, it's probably the good version. Um, the good version is the older version and includes all the maps and the um, pictures and stuff. If you get the new version, it doesn't have all the pictures and maps in it. So it refers to pictures and maps that aren't available because the new publisher is an idiot. So if it looks like this and is by Ian Allen Publishing, then chances are you've got the right version. If it's not like this, chances are you've got the poor version. And I don't know what the Kindle version is like. I don't know. Overall, I'd say it was brilliant, I think is probably the word I would use. Um, I would say it was one of three books that you must read. If, if you're going to read up about Operation Market Garden uh, as a whole, then there's three books you should read. One would be Cornelius Ryan's A Bridge Too Far. Uh, the other one would be Robert Nealon's The Battle for the Rhine, 1944. That goes on to the Ardennes as well, but you know the first part of that's good. And also this one, It Never Snows in September by Kershaw. The, those three books, I would say, sort of encapsulate the Market Garden experience, along with the film. You've got to watch A Bridge Too Far. So those three books, that film kind of just says everything about Operation Market Garden that you need to kind of know, or at least gives a very good introduction. And I wouldn't rely on one of them. You'd, you'd kind of have to rely on all of them. And I'd say that Ryan's book should be read first, then this one, then Neelan's in that order. And once you do that, you will get a great perspective, an all-rounded look at the operation. Um, and until you read all those three, you, you kind of not got into the debate that is raging about this battle. So have you guys read It Never Snows in September? What do you think of it? Let us know in the comments below. And if you like this book review, give the uh, video a little like. Let us know because I might do more in the future. Probably will do. We'll see. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Happy New Year. Bye for now.